Hello, Crafty Tribe. This is Artsy Maddie, and let's get creative. I want to start by saying happy St. Patrick's Day to you. I hope you're having a good one. Um, so today I'm just starting off with this $4 wreath from Dollarama, and I just peeled all the tinsel off it and gave it a coat of green paint. Um, so originally I was planning to use this um, green cord to wrap around it, but I just couldn't get it to lay right. It was just too bulky and it wouldn't work. So then I pulled out this green fabric that I had got at a thrift store. And it was really weird shape, like a remnant kind of of a project. So it was really long and narrow. And then I cut it down into four even narrower strips that were really long. And then I just took my time and always tried to keep a folded edge um, at the top. So to keep the edges nice so that there wasn't that raw um, salvage edge, like with the little ripped fraying parts. So just folding it over, taking my time, gluing everything down when I needed to, and cutting away all the little um, fuzzies and free part. And then, yeah, just wrapping it so that there was always a folded edge showing. And just taking my time to do that. So it's not a project you want to rush through. Just take your time. Be sure you're not in a hurry. And then I'll just show you. So starting on the next one, I just glued it down at the back. And then just slowly um, getting those folds right on the front. And then it just took a little bit of finagling to get it started. I usually had to kind of wrap it through kind of the little narrow part and tuck it in. And then just keeping that folded edge at the top. So I would usually glue it down a little bit in the beginning, but once you get going, then it wouldn't really need much glue after that until you get to the end of that piece. So I thought this would be a good project if you like um, rustic, you could do it with a burlap wrap. Um, they even sell burlap ribbon that you wouldn't even have to worry about the edges. So that would be nice and easy. Or if you're kind of more of a neutral person and don't like all the bright and colorful um, colors, you could even just rip a bed sheet, like a white or a linen color bed sheet, and then just have a nice neutral uh, four leaf clover, or sorry, it's three leaf clover <laughs> wreath idea for St. Patrick's. So then once I had it all wrapped, I just traced it out on some black foam core that I had just to make it a little bit more stable. So of course, if you liked it just like this, you could just leave the wreath, wreath as is. But I love everything bright and colorful and kind of over the top. So I decided to cut out some foam core. Um, I just cut it about a quarter inch in from the edge, just so that you wouldn't see it on the outside of the wreath, but just on the inside. And then I had traced those little heart shapes that you see through the wreath um, as well. And the trick to cutting this foam core is a sharp knife. So I don't know if you noticed, but I just used a little sharpener to get the blade nice and sharp to cut through and get nice clean edges. And then those little white heart shapes, or the little heart shapes, I just gave two coats of white um, chalk paint uh, just to give it a nice undercoat because I wanted to paint a nice bright rainbow on it and it wouldn't be so bright if it was just on black. So just giving it that nice undercoat to paint over top of, making sure that I got all of the black cover that I needed to. And then this is a little trick for keeping your paint. So if you're gonna be using it throughout the week, as long as you block the light from it, so foil works great for that. And then I just stick it in a Ziploc bag with a wet paper towel and that kind of keeps your paint going throughout the week. If you have multiple projects or you're coming back to something, it's a good way to just not have to clean up every time. And then I just started painting a rainbow onto these hearts. So just kind of freestyling it. It's not a perfect rainbow by any means, but just nice and bright and fun and colorful. So I have, I have all these um, colors out from the next project, the sign that I worked on as well. So I think most of them are just the acrylic paints from Dollar Tree, I want to say. 
and if not then maybe just like a Walmart acrylic or or maybe even Michaels so you just take your time this is great practice um, if you feel you don't have a steady hand or you're not confident painting these nice fun little easy quick projects are great to practice and get a steadier hand and it's just paint so if it doesn't work out you can always just let it dry paint over it um, yeah it's just paint <laughs> So then after this is dry, I'll just check that I got everything I needed to, that it covered up all the spots that I wanted to. I'm just wrapping it up for the next project. So it worked out, got everything I needed to, and then I just glued it down with some hot glue to the wreath. It actually made the wreath a little bit more stable as well. And then just because this project isn't fun and colorful enough, I thought I would add a rainbow bow <laughs> as well. So these ribbons are old. I've had them forever. I'm just using what I have in my stash. So I don't even remember where they came from. I'm sorry. But you could just look around for any colorful ribbons that make you happy or that you're drawn to. And these ones are actually just um, paper ribbon. It's kind of like a twisted up raffia almost that's just um, spread out flat. So I had some yellow as well. And then I just cut a piece of wire to tie it all together with. And then also some green raffia. This is old as well. Just had that in my stash too. So of course, you wouldn't have to do this project this colorful, but I just thought it would be fun. And I've always kind of loved St. Patrick's Day, and my kids have built, loved building leprechaun traps for the last dozen years. So that's kind of our fun thing to do on St. Patrick's Day. What do you guys like to do? What are your favorite traditions for St. Paddy's Day? Mm -hmm. And then I just tied it down with that wire, just down to the frame, and gave it a good couple twists and fluffed out the bow. The paper is a little hard to fluff out. <laughs> I thought I would add some flowers, but they were kind of a little over the top for this over the top project. So here it is, finished hanging on my door. And then just to let you guys know that this video is part of Sign Wednesday which is hosted by Deco Easy and Crafty Lini, and they hold it the third Wednesday of each month. And if you haven't heard of Deco Easy, they are a very creative pair, um, Yanni and Diane, and they are mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. Great combo, they make really unique, fun crafts. I just look forward to every video that they put out. And then Crafty Lini, she's the lovely, talented lady who does a really fun show on Saturdays called the Crafty Lini Show. I highly recommend you check it out. It's lots of fun, lots of laughs. And then I will move into our sign project. So here I just have a two foot by four foot piece of hardboard. Um, it's one eighth inch hardboard. So I just had like a four by eight sheet cut down and it works out to about five dollars a piece. Actually less than that, I think. And then I just gave it a coat of some sky blue latex paint that I had on hand, but you could definitely just use some sky blue acrylic. I'm just using what I have. So then I added some white to the sky blue, and then in another cup I added more white to the sky blue. So I have three shades of blue, and then here I'm just blending them all together. So I kind of just use a cross hatch, cross hatch motion, just making little X's with my brush and just blending it all together. So this is a really great size to just try this out. Like if you've ever wanted to do it on a wall, this would be a great size to practice on. And if you don't like your first attempt, you can just try it again. It's just paint, so you can let it dry, give it another try. So these little round sponges, they sell at Dollar Tree and they are perfect for making clouds, which I've shown in a previous video, but I'll just show it here again. So I just dampen the sponge with some water and then I'm just using some white acrylic paint and just 
with the top edge of the sponge just creating the cloud shape. So the main thing is you want to be kind of random. You don't want every cloud to be the same. So you just think some are big and puffy, some are kind of wispy and thinner, and just keep them nice and random. random. So uh, making sure that every cloud isn't exactly the same. And yeah, just be creative with your little cloud formations, but nice and easy. This is a great way to start with paint as well. <laughs> So then I'll just show you a further step that you can do just to add a little bit more dimension and make them a little bit more realistic. So I just have some gray and blue acrylic paint and mixing it with a little bit of white. It doesn't have to be perfectly mixed, I'm just getting that kind of grayish color. And then with the same sponge and it's still damp, um, I just go in and add a little bit of gray to the bottom of the clouds and then I put some more white on my sponge again and then just blend them together just so that the underneath has that gray part. I don't know if you've ever really studied a cloud or painted a cloud before but mostly um, if it is a big puffy cloud it'll have a little bit of gray undertones underneath. So I'm just trying to add in that dimension and kind of make them a little bit more realistic. So those like wispy light clouds probably wouldn't bother with the gray but just the big puffy white ones. So then I knew I wanted to add a nice big rainbow to this picture. So I took a piece of chalk and twine and tied it to a pencil and got it the length that I wanted to make my rainbow shape. And then just tracing the chalk onto the board. And then I had marked out with a little uh, faint little paintbrush just how many lines I needed for my rainbow and about how wide I wanted it. And then just drew out the bottom as well. And then to be able to get the rainbow nice and bright again, like I did with the wreath, I'm just going to give it a white undercoat, like a white base coat. And I just use my sponge for that as well. I actually think this is chalk paint, um, just because it does get such great coverage. So it's just the Waverly white linen white chalk paint. And then just covered up that whole rainbow shape so that I have a nice base coat to work on. So of course you could do this project on a much smaller scale as well, um, just with any little um, canvas or, or a piece of wood that you have at home. Um, it's a great painting project just to start with or practice with. And then if you did want to do these rainbow lines, these are great for getting your hand to be more steady and great practice for painting. So again, I'm just using those same colors and doing a nice bright rainbow. And I'll just let you watch me paint. So I just have a nice squared off um, flat brush that was almost the width that I wanted. Um, when you push down on it, the brush will spread out a little bit more. So you'd maybe just choose a brush just a little bit narrower than what you want the actual width of your stripe to be. But just a nice flat brush with the end um, cut off like a blunt end on it. So I'll just show you the yellow and a little bit of the green. So again, if you don't like the bright colors, you could do this in more of a muted um, like boho style with like the pinks and kind of that um, tan color maybe or something fun like that. And then I just wanted to go through, I knew I wanted to put lucky us to have each other. Um, the footage didn't work out too well because my head is in the way of drawing all the letters, but um, I will put the link underneath in my description box to the fonts that I was inspired by off to font.com 
And if I can, I'm going to try and find a link to um, set up the words just like that so I can share them with you. Like if you do have a Cricut or a Silhouette machine that you wanted to cut them out with, um, then I will try and share them just like this. So this is just some green latex paint that I had on hand as well. But again, you could just use acrylic. Um, if you're not big on green, of course, any color that you do like. So I just went through and did two coats on each letter. I had some foam, uh, little shamrocks, some little clovers. Oh, that'll be the next step. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so to frame it out, I just have a one by two fur stripping from Home Depot. Uh, it's about $2 for an eight foot piece. And I like to just get them cut down the middle on a table saw. And then you end up with three quarters by three quarter inch stripping. And I'm just painting it with some black and brown that's watered down to be a quick stain that'll dry really fast. And it's just a really inexpensive, easy way to just frame out a board like this. So for less than $2, I'm able to frame this picture. So here we go. This is the little foam stickers. They're just from Dollar Tree as well. I just thought it was a cute little touch to this picture. And that is that. So you could spray it with a um, sealer if you wanted to protect the frame and the picture from getting scratched. It helps a bit to protect it. And here's the finished project. So hopefully I've inspired you today <laughs> with one of these projects. And hopefully you've liked this video and give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, I would absolutely love it if you guys would subscribe. And I will see you soon in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Happy St. Patrick's Day.